Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the spectroscopy of benzene and substituted benzenes. But this is really mostly review of things that we talked about last semester when we talked about IR and NMR spectroscopy. But we'll focus on some of the specifics and remind ourselves about some of the specifics of IR and NMR spectroscopy when we have a benzene ring present. So first let's talk about the IR spectroscopy. So if you remember, the region around 3,000 wave numbers tells us about CH stretches. And if we're less than 3,000 wave numbers, those are typically CSP3 hydrogen stretches. If we're at about 3,100 wave numbers, those are SP2 hybridized carbon CH stretches. And so because in benzene we only have SP2 hybridized carbons, uh, any of those CH stretches we would expect to see around 3,100 wave numbers. Now, the comment here does mention that the intensity here is sometimes weak. If you remember, the more symmetry we have in the molecule, the weaker the IR signals are. And if we just have, you know, a benzene by itself, that's very symmetric. And so the signals are going to be pretty weak. And so uh, the more symmetry there is in the molecule, a lot of these signals, you know, may be uh, difficult to see. Or we may not even see them at all, depending on the compound. All right? One thing that I didn't really talk about, although some other professors might when we talked about spectroscopy last semester, is that in the region of 1,700 to 2,000 wave numbers, we sort of see what are called combination or overtone bands, where we sort of see these regular, uh, I don't know, they almost kind of look like waves, and we'll see an example of that on the next slide. That's characteristic of the presence of a benzene ring, but again, sometimes we see them, sometimes we don't. The other thing that we'd expect to see from a benzene ring is we know that carbon-carbon double bonds appear in the region of 1450 to 1650 wave numbers. And so this is still certainly true uh, when we have uh, a benzene ring. Although again, because of the symmetry, sometimes these may be relatively weak. Now the book talks about these signals uh, in the fingerprint region, but we really don't look at the fingerprint region. And so I'm going to say, you know, really ignore that. We're going to focus in signals that would appear in the diagnostic region of the IR spectrum. Okay, here's an, uh, an example. This is the IR spectrum of ethylbenzene. And again, when we're analyzing IR spectra, oftentimes what we recommend is draw a line at 1500 wave numbers, right, and then ignore the fingerprint region. So these two signals that the book talks about, like there's all kinds of stuff going on in that region. And so it's, it's hard to tell whether those are due to uh, benzene or not, right? The signals that we would look for, right, in this region are where we'd expect to see the carbon-carbon double bonds with benzene obviously has. These are the overtone bands that we talked about, sort of these regular wave-like things in the region of 1,700 to 2,000. Sometimes it's even a little bit higher than 2,000. And then we also see a signal at 3,100 wave numbers, which is characteristic of the sp2 hybridized carbon CH stretches. Right now in this compound, we do have a signal less than 3,000 wave numbers, and that's because of this ethyl group. These sp3 hybridized carbons, their CH stretches are going to give the signal down here. But the ones coming from the benzene are the sp2 hybridized CH stretches here, the combination or overtone bands, and then the carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, so switching gears and now talking about proton NMR. We talked about proton NMR. We said that it's really easy very often to pick out a benzene ring. So aromatic protons typically appear in the region of 6.5 to 8 ppm. And this is really just about the only thing that appears in this region. So when you see anything between about 6.5 and 8 ppm, that's a pretty clear sign that we have a uh, benzene ring. Now the integration of the signal in that region is used for, for telling us how substituted the benzene ring is, right? If we only have five protons, or if we only have an intensity of five, right, then that indicates that this is a mono-substituted benzene. If this integration number was four, that's likely a di-substituted benzene. If the intensity is three, tri-substituted, etc. Now, the multiplicity, on the other hand, often doesn't tell us a lot, with a couple exceptions that I'll talk about on the next slide. So very often, the multiplicity of the benzene signal doesn't tell us much, right? We just get a blah. We just get a whole bunch of 
sort of overlapping peaks in the region between 6.5 and 8, and it's hard to tell what's going on. The one exception to that is when we have a para disubstituted benzene. So when we have two substituents, and they're on opposite sides of the ring. If those substituents are identical, very often what we'll see is a singlet, because now each of these hydrogens that are contributing to the proton NMR signal are identical, and so it shouldn't be split. If the two substituents are different, then these two hydrogens are chemically equivalent, and these two hydrogens are chemically equivalent, and so in this case we would see the signature two doublets in the benzene region, each with an uh, integration of two. So usually the multiplicity doesn't tell us anything, except if we're paradise substituted, if both substituents are the same, we'll often see one signal. If the substituents are different, then we see these two doublets. Okay, finally, let's talk about carbon-13 NMR. So the carbons of the benzene ring typically appear between 100 and 150 ppm. And this is typical for any sp2 hybridized carbon, not just uh, benzenes. But what can be helpful, if we know we have a benzene ring, then the number of signals between 100 and 150 can tell us about what our substitution is. And so the, the book gives these common signals. I'm not going to go through them all individually, and you don't have to memorize them, but you should be able to tell in looking at any a particular structure, how many signals you could get, and that can help confirm, uh, in particular, if you have ortho or meta, that you can't necessarily tell from the proton NMR, but the number of signals in the carbon-13 NMR can help narrow down um, what your uh, substitution of your benzene ring is.